I Rick, I had a little Rickrolled uh, the day before yesterday. Did you see my April Fool's video? I got Rickrolled by it. I was like, I, I, I recognized, of course, it was an April Fool's video, but I was like, I want to see where this links to. What are the ass going on? Can we watch it? It's only like a minute long, and I promise I won't file any copyright strikes against you. Link it. All right, let's see here. Put my coffee down. I liked Woody's uh, April Fool's Day tweet of getting Joe Rogan on the podcast. I that. I that was. I didn't even tweet that. That was like an inspect element alter thing. Like that's not in my timeline. That's hilarious. I saw you oh, take tell credit for it. I said it was funny. <laughs> I didn't know it. I, I got your uh, S your text message to Chiz about how we landed Joe Rogan, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what he did. Like Chiz must have tweeted it, and then I saw that I tweeted it. And I did not, but I liked it too. <laughs> so what do we got here, Kyle? I am linking you right now. All right. Let's get this thing high quality. I'm queued up at zero. Is it my? Is everybody ready? Come on, cat. You'll like it. I'm waiting for the commercial. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, don't you skip that fast, ad. Fast and furious. <laughs> you watch that whole don't fucking thing. You buy that, that guy. Fast and furious. You watch it ten times, he'll make a penny. Fast and furious and chicks fighting. It's awesome. Oh, that's a high CPM. All right, it's good to go. <laughs> All right, ready, set, play. Nice graphics. Hello, my friends. It's Seems FPS like that's Russia, dragging on for quite a while. Got a very nice video for you guys today. Down the range, I have four it's a good shirt. plates of AR-500 Thank you. I like that design. Steel. That this is one of my favorites. Just about anything. But what I'm throwing at it today is something very special. I have my own brand of ammunition now. FPS armor-piercing ammunition. So each of those armored plates down small. there can stop an armor-piercing 308 round. things come in small packages. I've got 22 long rifles. But not an FPS Russia 22 armor piercing round. No, not with the depleted uranium and, you know, a much larger powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, <laughs> it's only you use this pink cricket rifle that you can actually contain the power. <laughs> now, you're going to notice the camera cuts away, actually, as I fire. That's because the recoil ruined the camera. It, I don't know, some, the footage is all blurred. <laughs> you can see the impact there. That was absolutely amazing. And it's substantial. Let's Lots of power there. See how that AR um, steel where did the explosion come from? Round. From the ammunition itself. Okay, yeah. so I promised devastation, and devastation is what we got. You can all see the, the first smoke plates, plates that I thought they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, those, yeah. Are those are special plates that uh, AR-500 sent to me. Those are, uh, just straight. Those there are was serious. No bullet what actually shot through all of those? Have power to a 20 millimeter anti-tank rifle that I shot out of the back of my truck. Why was it explosive? Because it was an explosive round from 1928. Are you serious? It was stamped with a fucking eagle and swastika, like the Nazi and the emblem. And the interesting thing, the um, I hope I'm not wrong about this, I believe in 1928, Germany was under the Treaty of Versailles, which you know they signed after World War I. It was really punishing um, um, uh, rules against uh, uh, Germany, I can't think right now. But one of the thing, one of the rules that was established is they, they couldn't make that kind of ammo. Uh, so the ammo that we shot right there was actually, in my opinion, like... A collectible item because it's an illegally produced Nazi explosive round but we just <coughs> use it right here for uh, my April Fool's Day video so I thought it was worth yeah. it taking something historically sad and making it a joke <laughs> late <it's> great <laughs> later I took that same gun and I shot through um, four plates and then through eight inches of pressure treated concrete and then into an oak tree so far that I could stick my middle finger into the hole and still couldn't reach the bullet when you put the plates together, they they it, they pierce more easily, and and you, and you back them with concrete. That round is, well, it's an anti-tank round. You know, you'd have a couple of Nazis in the bushes with that Solotherm rifle. Uh, it weighs 125 pounds, something like that. It's massive. Um, there's no recoil, uh, less hmm. recoil than a shotgun. It's I'm, bizarre. I'm sure well, if you got 120 any, pounds. I'm sure if you get any of these minute gun details wrong. The gun crowd won't mention it. They're pretty <laughs> forgiving about that sort of thing. If, if the Treaty of Versailles was signed in some other year, or, or they yeah, didn't not a very a, elitist crowd. No, I'm aware the Treaty of Versailles no. was not signed in 1928. I just believe that uh, Nazi Germany or Germany was under the uh, conditions of that <laughs> treaty 
during 1928. I'm like 99% sure of that. And therefore, they should not have been making the kind of ammo that they ha were definitely making because I could see the stamp on the bullet that says 1928 and there's a Nazi emblem on it. And, uh, and so there. How many but more do you a, have? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know oh, a lot, a too. Lot. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, you just, would you fed those into the clip and then drop that into the bottom of the of the gun and then um it's called a 20 millimeter because it's 0.2 inches i think yeah and, nailed it nailed yeah. it all of that all of those all of those facts are exactly correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. travels at dozens if not i mean several dozen feet per second so it's really we're working fast. on oh, a, yeah tens of feet per second video <laughs> i'm gonna do a full video with that solar third anti-tank rifle but I'm, I refuse to do the, the video until I'm capable of shoulder firing it. So it's a 120-pound rifle and a lot of its barrel. So i got to do a lot of curls, I think, before I'm going to be able to do that. But whenever we're able to do it, then we're going to do the video. I want to see you shoulder my rifle. I, 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 could, I could shoulder your <laughs> rifle, no problem. That sounds so bad. Sorry. <laughs> I'd love make it gay, cat. Make it my gay. line just goes there. You, you sure you can do it? On my shoulder anytime you want, Woody. Just walk up behind me. Uh -huh. uh, it doesn't matter if I know it's coming or not. And Tell just, me more. Just, just put your rifle to my shoulder, and I'll see if I I'll see if I'm man enough to take it. I think that's where you're headed. To. You don't think that I'm man enough to to shoulder your rifle, but I promise you, I am, and more. Oh, I know from experience in Chicago, Kyle Damn, is quite right. a man when it comes to taking a rifle. Mm. Quite a man. Yeah. So Woody's so cat, are you into guns? Really? <laughs> Woody's got a really heavy rifle, and I think I can shoulder it. I'm I can't shoulder it. I am. Um... Shucks. I, I, I'm just about able to swing it up level, and then it'll just fall right back down. I can't keep it up. Hmm. Maybe if you were there, I could. You know, <laughs> with, with, with your shoulder, right? You would help me. You think if I were there, you'd be able to get it up? Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh. I'm not as young as I used to be. I probably it's, could have done it when I was like 19. And, and hold. You've got to get it up and hold it. Per, you know, like uh, perpendicular to the, the horizon, though. You got to like straight out at least. You can't have mm -hmm. it drooping down or anything. That doesn't count. You can't have a no, semi. No, it cannot be flaccid at all. Must be no. 100%. <laughs> I don't. He went when I was crazy. young, I'd have been able to hold it straight up. And then over the years, it kind of goes straight out. And now it's just too heavy. Oh my God, we got to kill this. Cat, are you into <laughs> firearms? <laughs> uh, my, my last name being Shoulder. Gun, I, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't really live up to the last name. I have, actually, what's getting me more into guns, strangely enough, is cosplay, because I cosplayed as Kate Beckinsale's Underworld character, uh, Celine, and she uses Berettas. And so I went to the shooting range to actually use the uh, real gun itself. And uh, <laughs> This one? <laughs> Is that, I don't know if it's actually that one, because there were gun people that came in and said, oh, there's this extension, and it has this to it, and so there is a lot of specifics, and she changes guns halfway through the movie, uh, but it's nice having gun people out there, because they are really on top of their shit. Wait, and that's the not nice. That's the worst part about having gun people out there. They are so on top of their <laughs> shit. Heaven forbid you be have like a 92F instead of a Beretta 92, oh, whatever yeah. the flip it is. Oh, the way I was holding the gun in the picture, I just got so much shit for that. It actually made me take the photo down because I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and retake that photo correctly. Did you, have Did you not have proper trigger? trigger discipline? Is that the screw? No, the, the guy, oh my God, this shooting range, um, mm -hmm. it was just specifically one guy. I was, uh, I'm, I'm intimidated by guns, you know, I'm, I'm still getting comfortable with them but this mm -hmm. guy he doesn't even like help he's kind of like just lazy like like some sort of stoner dude or something just sitting there like yeah just That's go over you there want. you know that sounds like really an help. ideal safety officer carry on no yeah but he just you could tell like i i even said like oh i'm here with my friend this is his first time <laughs> um and he just didn't really care he's just like go over there go to that thing and we had to stop him at least four to five times asking him questions to make sure that it was the proper way of doing things and yeah they just were not very uh, good at assisting, which I was going to get on like Yelp where they we found them and kind of get on there and say like, yeah, they need to be more on top of that because it's not good for a newbie to not have assistance in that kind of situation. But um, it's going to be dangerous. That right. sounds like a very, very friendly, dissatisfied Yelp review. You know, we should be more on top of this. <laughs> I like how you didn't go to just immediate anger and frustration. My range would have been all over you and, and not in a helpful way. They publicly embarrass you for any like minute violation you might make. I hate um, that. I hate those gun snobs who come over that's, and they that's, like don't like the way you're holding your thumb when you're putting a 
round into the magazine. Yeah. <laughs> They'll say something about stupid shit. Like, you want to be putting your thumb on the side so you're not numbing it up for the grip. And it's like, you're making shit up, you ass. <laughs> 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 I think it, I think it's better to feel embarrassed and learn like you'll never do it again as opposed to just like having this guy that doesn't give a shit and he's just like going off and doing his own there thing. There has to be a oh, happy definitely. medium in there somewhere. There because the problem is they'll be so nitpicky and they'll be, sometimes gun guys will um, sort of revel in the fact that ah I have something over this guy. This is my area of expertise and this guy knows nothing about it. He might know how to do all that fancy doctoring or what, <laughs> but I know how to operate this cope here. So and you get that guy, and he just really wants to talk down to you and be an asshole. Like when I when I show people how to use a gun for the first time, I don't give them a bunch of bullshit that they don't need to know. I just give them the basics and and make sure they're not going to hurt anybody or do anything dangerous, and let them have some fun. And then once they've had a little fun, then maybe they'll want to learn the difference between a clip and a magazine and stuff like that. Eh. And if they are too nitpicky over certain little things that don't matter when they still haven't mentioned like keeping your finger off the trigger till you're down range and ready to fire. You're just going to start to think like, okay, this can't be as serious as they're saying if they're telling me to, you know, lay the gun down differently while it's still pointed down range. Just stupid, stupid shit. And you just start to rationalize it in your head like this isn't as dangerous as everyone says. And that's how you make mistakes. That's, that's how why you get I shot. That's why I, I, I like shooting in, uh, in my backyard better than much more than, than any range or anything. Or even at like machine guns uh, shoots. I've been to Knob Creek two or three times and they have a, they have a huge machine gun shoot there. There's... Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of people on the firing line, and a big horn blows, and then everybody starts fucking shooting. Actually, I think a cannon goes off, <laughs> and uh, and everybody starts shooting. And there's mini guns and 30 caliber machine guns, and uh, all kinds With of. With all those people, you feel like it's safe. Oh, it's very safe. There's only been hmm. like a death, one or two deaths, and it. it wow. Like, <laughs> I don't think. No, no, no. Hang on now. Like, I would like, feel no, safe too. <laughs> but no one's ever been shot. I think uh, the death was like uh, the recoil of a gun knocked over a tripod. Yeah. And, and then the a brain aneurysm, right? Yeah, I think it hit right a girl. on the spot. I, it, it's, you gotta imagine it's really heavy. <laughs> was, was there a, really a hole? I don't brain. know if there was a hole. What's wrong with you? I think oh, he's like brain aneurysm, aneurysm right on the spot. You're like, I think he's talking about getting shot in the head. No, a, a machine gun fell over, and the tripod that it was sitting on, the leg of it, and I'm, it, it's a big leg, big metal, heavy thing, hit a girl in the head, and she died. I think that's that's the only death I really know of from there. But anyway, mm. uh, it's. Even with all that, <laughs> it's it's safe. It's uh, and, and that's I forgot where I was going with this. Yeah, real Mount safe Greek, unless safety, you're one of those two Nazis. people. Hmm. Oh, I was just gonna say I, I I would prefer to shoot at my place than to ever shoot at that thing again because it just doesn't. It's just not that much fun. It's 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 just not. There's it's you can't do what you really want to do. It's a lot more fun when you're on your yeah. own personal property away from. It's the prying eyes, uh, the prying eyes of someone who are, who's going to think that what you did isn't exactly the way uh, they want it done, and you can have you, a lot more fun. If you enjoy shooting, you should shoot with tracers. It yes. wasn't until I shot with tracers that I understood what the bullets did after they hit stuff. And there, there's kind of a, I guess if you shoot at a range enough, after the bullet hits its target, the bullet's just kind of gone, like it's hitting a big bunch of rubber mulch or whatever it is. But when you shoot with tracers against a tree and such, like you really see where they're going afterwards, and it's eye-opening, and then you become safer. They go places. Yep. Like They're like rubber balls. Sometimes they'll just make a right turn and go off that way, and sometimes they'll just skip straight up and just you know, go into the air until they just dwindle out of fire. They, they do weird stuff. Uh, they, that's, that's what I was doing all week. I was shooting 22 tracers at golf balls. It was probably three years ago or something. We went over to Wing, Wings of Redemption's house, <laughs> and... Uh, Wings and his girlfriend were shooting at a tree, and Kyle and I weren't, like, behind that tree, but we were behind the tree and off to the side. And Kyle's like, this is dangerous. Like, he shouldn't be shooting with us downrange like this. And um, and I was, in my head, like, I guess I, like, academically, like, understood how it could get to us. And then later that day, we brought out the incendiary rounds, and it was like, whoa, now I fully understand the danger we were in. Like, yeah. it... it I don't yeah. know where we were shooting either. So, so just a little backstory for this. We went to Wings of Redemption's mm. house. To, th was this New Year's or was this a different time? Do we want to catch Cat up on who Wings of Redemption is, in case she's not do familiar? Cat, do you know who Wings of Redemption is? Oh, Cat. Oh, Cat. Oh, Cat. <laughs> cat, Cat. I thought cat. all three of us should say it. <laughs> where do you begin? I've just been stuck in the gaming world. I just do gaming things. He's a gamer. Know. 
When so, Jay Namshin is a where gamer, you he is. Uh, I, mean, I feel like I should know. He has something like half a million ish subscribers on YouTube. He's kind of OG. Like, I want to say that his channel started in like 2008 ish, 7 ish. Um, he's largely COD. known for COD, but he plays other games too. He's into Fallout, he's into um, Dragon's Age, he likes Dark Souls. I don't know if he likes the new one. Um, Battlefield. So mostly a shooter guy. Um, he's good he's at video got- games. He's got a, a, a ridiculous sort of um, personality that I feel transfers really well to YouTube. And he's got a crazy like home life and family life. And there's always lots of drama going off. And it's like a crazy, bizarre situation that he lives in. So he's very entertaining to us. Uh, so we, we went to Wing's house for, was it New Year's when yes, we did the shooting? Or was it, it a different was. time? It was New Year's Eve. Yeah. We went there for New Year's uh, up near Myrtle Beach in Conway, South Carolina. And I brought a truckload of guns. I don't know how many I brought, like 10 or 15 guns and a lot of ammo too, and some Tannerite, I think. And uh, I don't know. We we I don't know if we shot. We shot before or after. We shot a little bit, like on New Year's Eve, like you explode. You shot some explosives, yeah. but it was New Year's Day that you know we okay. hauled everything out. So I, he said, "I've got the perfect place to shoot. I got a place. I got a place." And so he takes us out on. I don't know where we were. We were <laughs> on public land or some something. swamp or something. Like, yeah. We, out in the middle of nowhere, like on this dirt road, and it just it, it it ended at a swamp, and there the swamp was, and we started shooting, and it was a bizarre situation. His whole family were, was there. Bastard Brook was there. God rest his soul. Uh, gangster Grandma was there. Um, but we his were mother like, was there. I felt like a fish in a bowl or something. Like like the the Wings of Redemption squad was there to see like like like. In my head, we're normal people, right? And and they're the <laughs> like I, I, I want to describe them as extreme country, you know. We were like no, we were like Martians <laughs> who were new to that, who just had landed, and they were just coming to see what the fuck was up. And and it was uh, they were all kind of standing off the side watching us as we shot guns and filmed and stuff. They, they like huddled together to watch the things that we did. Cause, yeah, because we were outsiders, and um, yeah, go on, Kyle. I don't know. That was a fun day. We shot a bunch of different stuff, and uh, but but yeah, Wings was shooting that tree, and and I felt for sure that at any minute he could uh, just kill one of us. I just imagined one of those seven six two by fifty four millimeter tracers darting off of a tree or that plasma he was trying to hit, and just taking my jugular out downrange. So yeah, would have ruined uh, your channel. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, and there weren't even any, any cameras rolling for that either. Hmm. That That's was an, an interesting day. Shooting with Wings of Redemption. I, I've. Um, I don't think we shot when he was here. We were too busy filming with cows and doing Jeremy pulls. Mm. Have you guys spoken to him recently? Um, I haven't in a couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. It's been a couple of weeks since I last talked to him. But uh, just doing the <clears> weekly <throat> check-in. <clears throat> like oh, how he's doing. You I guys. know that he's streaming on Twitch a lot more than he had been. It seems like his focus. A lot of people have kind of shifted their focus from YouTube to Twitch. Some people, quit, cause some people quit YouTube and just do Twitch now. They had like, what, there's a girl I know, LL Ray Ray. She has like a 200,000 subs on YouTube and she hasn't uploaded in three months because she's just all Twitch. Because that's where the money is. Yeah, the Twitch has a model where basically people just donate straight to the streamer and they get 100% <laughs> of the cash. Yep. Whereas YouTube is going the other way. And like, even if you find your own brand and integration deals, they're trying to get like shut that down and, and, and take a piece of that. And, um, it's just, it's hard when it gets split like that. We'll see. Cat, I find it more Game natural for Twitch because you're just like, you can turn it on and you're, it's like this where you kind of sit and you talk and it's natural. As opposed for like me when it comes to YouTube, I like to lay it out and like, as soon as I have a script, I feel really weird when I turn on a camera. So like, I, it's like I want to build a character too and I don't just want to be myself i want to have more of a point and content so i guess it depends on how you approach youtube but for me i I feel so much easier to just sit there play a game talk about what's going on and like you just relate all day long with your chat too cat how long have you been uh, doing twitch uh, i've been doing it for like a, a year i've been on twitch when it first started uh but i didn't take it i didn't take it serious until about a year ago i got a sub button where they pay five bucks you get a portion of that. Uh, Twitch gets the other portion, and they get icons, 
and they get a little thing next to their name depending on whatever your theme is of your chat. Like for me it's my cat because I have like a Bengal cat that everybody loves uh, named Marble. And they also get specific icons that you make for your chat as well. So I have a bunch of, I have a gun actually that looks like a cat because it's a cat gun. You have a so Bengal cat? Is that yeah, really expensive? Cat. Yeah, uh, I actually bred them. Uh, they go anywhere from six hundred to a thousand dollars or twelve hundred oh. if you get. But there's ones that look like leopards, and then there's ones that are like striped and have like crazy stripe patterns. Um, but it's actually I don't know that they call them bangles for whatever reason. Uh, it's a breed that's been around since the '80s, and mm. they normally mm. they call them lap leopards because they look like the the main bangle is like a mini lap leopard. But the one I have, she has like kind of just all sorts of crazy variations on her coat. And um, I, it was fun. It was a whole experience for me. I, I did three de generations of breeding them. Why'd you stop breeding them? It was the essentially selling them and getting them to a house that you would think cares as much as you do for the cat. I went to check up on some because they have to get neutered or spayed depending on where they go. Mm -hmm. And I went to check up on a guy cat that I'd sold and he was just in a, like the condition he was in was nothing that I would want a future cat to be in. Uh, the room was just like really smelly. It smelled like boy cat and uh, she just, she had like a gajillion other animals too. She had five acres of like horses, mm. chinchillas, ferrets, like anything you could think of. She owned it. Yeah, normal uh, sane person, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how you even take care of that many animals. Like how, you'd literally have to spend your whole day feeding and caring and cleaning just for animals. So I think she had a squad of people just to do that as well. So after that experience, I was just like, I can't trust <coughs> the people that they go to, unfortunately. So I just, I just did it for my own personal a uh, cat and kept kept one of them out of the breed. So. Do you know who John Bengal Jones cats, is? Those huge ones. No, is that's it? ocelots. Those are os those are ocelots. Those I, are the twenty two thousand dollar dog height. That's leopard. what John Jones said. So I put a link in the description. This guy's cat. He said he paid twenty five thousand dollars for it. Here, I'll. Yep, yep. That's it. They're they're supposed to get huge. They get like, they get super big. Here, I'm gonna what see a ridiculous show you cat. A picture of my cat. Twenty five thousand dollars. Why? Why? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> he lost oh, I, I his I paid twenty-five thousand dollars for an animal that couldn't give less of a shit about me. <laughs> I could die, and thirty seconds later, this thing will be eating me. Ninety percent oh, of my phone warm. album is the cat, anyway. Boop, 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 boop. Trying to find more pictures of this cat, like with things to scale. Yeah, I'm. I'm having a hard time finding ones that really show off her side coat. Um, if you guys can see that at all. Oh, wow. She's they're very talkative. They they actually fetch. I have a video on my Facebook where she fetches and she brings it back and you keep throwing it, she brings it back. So they're kind of like dogs uh, in I'm a lot. I'm very of skeptical of the fetching thing. Do, do all Bengal cats fetch? Yes, most do. Yeah. Almost almost all. Yes. All of all of my <laughs> Bengal cats that I've had, they've they've learned to they learned to fetch too. Like this one wasn't fetching for the first half year or year that I had her and then eventually she finds that one toy she loves and then she likes uh, Nerf guns. So whenever you cock a Nerf gun, she's like, <gasps> and she like perks up and she goes looking for the darts and chews them up and everything like that. So that's huh. that's different than fetching. <laughs> <laughs> she fetches it. She brings it back. Okay. She likes it. All right. Yeah, that's fetching. <laughs> what? What's... Well, it's if I said my dog cat. loves to fetch, when I throw stuff, he chews it up and ruins it. <laughs> <You're> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she ruins the Nerf gun. Like you can't use the Nerf dart. She puts holes in it, and the air, the whole air compression thing, doesn't work anymore. So. Mm -hmm. Ah, so she basically ruins the whole Nerf gun because who goes and buys more darts? You have to buy the darts when you buy the gun. See, you do, parents. If, you just, gotta... just... if you're smart. Yeah, when, it, like I've bought Nerf guns as an adult, and it's like, yeah, let's get eight thousand of these little uh, rubber discs because we're not picking them back up after we shoot them. <laughs> we uh, we we had a crazy like Nerf war one time in a hotel. We pissed everybody off. It was one in the morning, but we went to Walmart and got like eight Nerf guns, and we bought. We had so many of those darts. You gotta buy extra. As a kid, I only had like the twelve that came with it, and I'd lose those in a week. I, well, yeah, we they're easy. Nerf guns Dude. when we went to that Walmart. Kyle's got when the we, most when we got in the noodle fight. Land. Or, I, sorry, I'm gonna go off, but like it, you go to Kyle's house, right? And you shoot stuff and whatever, and like shotgun shells are flying out and brass and stuff from the you know that the round was in, and uh, it's like Kyle, what do you do with all these like things that are flying? He's like, yeah, that that's just what gravel's made of around here yeah <laughs> you know? yeah there's just 
You should see what the field. I actually cleaned the field up um, before this last video shoot. We dug a big hole with a backhoe with an excavator and pushed all the TVs and concrete blocks and crushed toilets and everything into the hole. And then I just made an even bigger mess. Now there's like a, a destroyed picket fence, a bunch of burnt mannequins, uh, a destroyed Mercedes Benz all burnt out and blown what, up. Was the and, backhoe on the back of a tractor? Where'd you get a backhoe? Do you, you just literally have like an excavator? That. You have a dedicated excavator for something? Mm hmm. It's in that uh, paintball video that, that we watched earlier. If you look on the right, in the right oh, yeah? side of the frame, you can see it in the background. So mm. that makes things easy when you can dig a big hole like that. But, uh, but, but right now, it's a mess again. I, I took eight toilets and I suspended them and made like a gigantic wind chime type thing, uh, like, you know, suspended in the air, and then I machine gunned them all. And as people those, do. As you do. <laughs> and, uh, and the whole valley is just full of, like, splinters of porcelain. That stuff just breaks off and shoots everywhere. It's a good time. We had a great week. Yeah, sounds I like I called it the world's sh shittiest wind chime. 